Welcome back to the Coaches Show here live from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Spartans getting ready to face the number four St. Francis Cougars. Joined, as always, by head coach Jason Burinek. Coach, uh, uh, before we get into this week's game, let's talk about last week. Homecoming, uh, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the game, how great of an environment was that? With all the fans out there, Spartan walk was, was just really loud. Uh, must have really been a great environment to have the team come home from uh, a long road trip after you'd played Marion the last time there. The crowd was a little thin. This time, crowd all out in effect. Yeah, the it, homecoming was a, a lot of fun. Um, it, the build up throughout the week, there was a lot of excitement, I think, around homecoming in general. Um, obviously, we, Thursday night really kind of kicked it off, I would say, with the Hall of Fame banquet, which was um, record attendance at that was a great evening. And then um, going into uh, Saturday with the game, and you, and you hit the nail on the head, the Spartan walk was just awesome. We talked about that in our meeting on Monday. Was That was probably the most uh, well-attended Spartan walk that we've had in our short history. And um, the fan support was incredible. Um, can't thank them enough for coming out and supporting and, and making a day of it. The weather was awesome. So uh, it, was, it was a really good day. Obviously, uh, we, we didn't play up to our capability, and that was something that we talked about on Monday is, you know, when you get that kind of excitement and you got to get that kind of buildup, we've got to do a better job of performing that, and something that we didn't do very consistently on Saturday. But uh, the fans were great. It, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. You know, that's the type of a game that – you know, obviously it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, but with that type of fan support, getting a win or two on the road, you know you're going to come back and really get a great crowd for that last game, which also happens to be senior day. That's going to be a, a fun game to watch because you're going to have a lot of seniors for the first time this year. Yeah, and, and you know, not to look too far ahead, but that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun to get back. Um, especially, I think, the guys are – little bit poor taste in their mouth about how they went out and defended their home turf on Saturday. But um, looking a couple weeks ahead, got a great opportunity against Lyon coming in. It is senior day. So uh, for several of our guys, it'll be the last time that they're able to put on the Spartan uniform. And for some of these guys, it, they're guys who've been with us uh, for a couple of years now. Sean Geary, you know, is a guy who was here since year one. So, um, you know, I, I hope that the fans come back. I hope we can get, uh, you know, a win on the road or two wins on the road and see what happens. But uh, hopefully the fans will come back on uh, November 12th and, and support us in the final home game of the season. But fans have been great. You know, you said their final game in a Spartan uniform, unless you're Mike Luna, who decided one final game and then another final season. Yeah. You know, a little bit of a victory lap for Mike, but, uh, but it was good having him back this year. No, that, that became really important for us. And that was something, you know, obviously we honored Mike last year on senior day and um, thought that it was it. And then it was found out throughout the summer that he was actually granted a medical redshirt year. So he had one more, but um, getting him back has been huge. You know, he's done a really good job in there, uh, giving us some depth on the defensive line. So uh, things worked out in kind of a weird way, but uh, we're definitely glad it did. Last week, uh, the... I think there's a couple of things you could point to uh, when we look at the running game. It really wasn't really there unless, you know, it wasn't there. But then you, if you look deeper at the statistics, you see Kendall Davis. And Kendall rushed for over five yards per carry in that game, had over 50 yards. Uh, really a kind of a lackluster running performance overall for the team. But Kendall's starting to, to really develop that spark for this team. Yeah, Kendall's uh, finally getting healthy. You know, he's he's battled uh, a wrist injury that he had surgery on uh, during the summer. That's been giving him a little bit of problems. Uh, he battled a, he had a concussion in the Belleville game, so he's uh, getting healthy. He's a phenomenal player. He's dynamic. You can see the speed that he has when he's out there. So. Um, Getting him kind of fine-tuned is going to be important, and uh, that was a game, you know, our, our offensive line is, is a little bit banged up right now, and so getting consistent running attack has been a challenge for us in the past couple of weeks, but I think when Kendall's able to stretch the ball, get it outside, something that uh, Antorio and Schultz and some of those guys, uh, Tyler Curtis, they do a great job running downhill. It's a little bit harder for them because they don't have Kendall's type speed to get to the perimeter, so... Um, it's kind of 
almost playing the back that is going to take what they're giving us. And, and uh, Kendall is definitely somebody who can create going outside, and, and he's explosive uh, inside as well. We just got to give him a little bit more crease there. Your recruitment uh, success has been evident this year. Uh, when you look at guys like Keenan Savage that we're going to talk about in just a moment, but when you look at locally, you know, Missouri Baptist wasn't initially a place like a destination for people to go play, but now all of a sudden, maybe your two best offensive players are coming from the Southwest Conference. And not only do you have Kendall Davis, but you've got Isaiah King, and both of those guys are dy dynamic players for you. Talk about having two dynamic freshmen uh, here on your offense. Well, it, it's game changing for us. Um, you know, both of those guys are big play. I mean, you've got to, if you're a defense preparing for us, you've got to account for Isaiah. You've got to account for Kendall. Um, so both of those guys are, can make a big play any, at any moment. And um, that's what's exciting is you get the ball in their hands, you don't know what's going to happen. They, I mean, they could go uh, for 70 uh, instantaneously. Obviously, the Southwestern Conference is one of the best conferences in the immediate area um, on either side, Missouri side or Illinois. They're, they're right up there. So uh, they come from a great, uh, great programs. Uh, Belleville East, Edwardsville are two really, really strong programs. So getting those guys that just have an idea of uh, what it takes to be successful and they come from success. They come from a winning program. Uh, they bring that into the locker room, and, and we need more of those guys, and we'll continue to be develop that depth. Um, I think both of those guys have challenged guys that have been here to even be better. You know, I, I see Sean Calhoun is a really strong player, and uh, just having Isaiah there to kind of feed off of and, and them push each other in practice has made uh, Sean better and has made Mike Beekert better. So um, we just got to keep getting those guys and continue to develop them. So, but uh, there's no doubt having those type of players on the field helps you out. You've got a guy named Kean Savage that we just love watching. You guys love watching him from the sidelines. We love watching him from the broadcast booth. He's a dynamic defensive player. He's leading. I think he's leading your team in tackles right now. Uh, this is the type of player that people on the defense feed from. What does having a player like that mean for recruiting purposes in coming years, seeing that you guys have a real strong player back there? Well, coming in from uh, Fort Scott, or yeah, Fort Scott Community College in Kansas, uh, Keenan has developed into exactly what we thought he was when we recruited him. A uh, guy, he just loves to play the game, and it's evident. You know, when he is out there, I think he makes everybody else around him better. He holds them to a really high standard. Uh, that's why he was voted a captain, uh, even though he'd only been here for about six months. People feed off of his energy. Um, he's a playmaker. He has a nose for the ball. But a lot of what he does is he just brings that natural effort that we talk about all the time that it doesn't matter. I mean, the play might be going away from him and all of a sudden Keenan's running across and getting in on the tackle. Um, he's typically in the right spot. You know, there's a few times here and there where he might get misaligned or something and, and some of it is the newness of the defense. But um, He's just a guy who makes everybody else around him better. He's a guy that brings in a, a lot of energy. He's a lot of fun to be around, a lot of fun to coach. Uh, I think in terms of recruiting, when we bring guys in, you know, they always ask, is that, is that Savage right there, number five? You know, I think if they're doing some homework about us, they know who Keenan Savage is and they want to see Keenan up close and see him in person. And, and then uh, in addition, he can be on the other side of the coin saying, yeah, hey, you know, things are going really well. We're going we're gonna to get this thing going in the right direction, and I'm, I'm a big part of that. So it definitely helps recruiting. Keenan Savage last week, 11 tackles again. I mean, just, just an animal out there. He's so much fun to watch. And, you know, you were talking about guys that are game changers and guys that are vocal. I had a chance to see one of these players just a couple of days ago. This is last week on Tuesday. I went to practice and was there at the end, and Dontrell Johnson spoke in front of the team. And I love what he said because, and I'm not going to share what he said, you know, that was a team thing, but I, I just really have to say how impressed I was by that young man. And I have a feeling that is really, he's a player that's really grown on this coaching staff. 
Oh, without a doubt. You know, uh, Dontrell and his brother, Devante Johnson, both of them. In fact, uh, DJ, obviously, is one of our corners, and he was here last year and, and uh, you know, kind of persuaded his brother to come back to St. Louis and, and so they could play together. And uh, uh, DJ, that we call uh, uh, Dontrell Trail, but mm -hmm. DJ, his brother, um, really was instrumental in getting him here. He actually transferred from St. Ambrose, so it was a big week for him. Um, but he, both of those guys, both of those guys are just great young men. Uh, Dontrell is a guy who comes to work every day. He really is a quiet kid. He doesn't say much, but I think as a team, the entire locker room listens when he talks because um, it's usually very to the point, um, is very influential to him, and, and there's not a lot of mixed mis messages when he does talk. So he has been playing at a very high level as well. Um, between him and Keenan, our, our Sam linebacker and our Will linebacker, they've been, I think last week, they accounted for over 20 tackles, the two of them. So, um, and then Savage gets the uh, sack fumbled at the end of the game, and Dontrell picks it up and makes a big return out of it. So they've been feeding off of each other very, very well over the last couple of weeks. And, and uh, both having both those guys, and then you put uh, Sean Geary in the middle, who is just Mr. Consistency. Uh, our linebacking core has, has been a real strength in our defense. When you look ahead at this week, you know, these get, you've got a tough customer coming up. You know, no one ever said the Mid-States Football Association was easy. You end up in the Mid-States Mid-East Division where we've got two top five teams in there. And I think uh, I, I was looking at the, some numbers the other day, and I think St. Francis has been in the top five 11 consecutive top 25 polls. That's, that's impressive as it is. But then you look at the players they have, and it really revolves, their offense revolves around Nick Fair, and he's really been something. Uh, 2,300 yards this season already, and I think he's got, I forget how many touchdowns he has, but I think it's over 20 at this point. Uh, just a dynamic quarterback. That's going to be something for you that's going to be interesting to try to stop. What were your initial thoughts coming into this week on how to go about stopping that type of passing attack? Uh, I, I don't think he, he's able to be stopped, honestly. I mean, he is a very talented player, and he's got really good weapons around him. Um, the offensive line is, is good. They do. Um, the, I think St. Francis does a really good job of knowing that he is such a talent that they use seven-man protections quite a bit. You know, They know that with their wide receivers, they're going to get open. As long as we give him time, he's going to be able to make the throw. Uh, the receivers are going to be able to get open as long as they have the time. Um, we've got to contain him as much as possible. You know, We've got to bring pressure uh, at calculated times and, and hope that it gets there. Uh, I think we've got to be aggressive. There's going to be times where, you know, we may have to roll the dice a little bit like we did against Marion and, and take a shot of making a play. If it, if it doesn't pan out, then, hey, we, you know, we've got to live with the results. But all in all, um, I think we've got to just be assignment sound, you know, uh, realize he's going to make some plays, the receivers are going to make some plays. Um, you know, if we can, if we can do that, then you know, we, I, I like what I like our game plan, but he, there's no doubt he's uh, probably going to be a first, second team All-American. Um, last year, he was a first, second team All-Conference guy, all like all intents and purposes. Um, he may not win Player of the Year in our conference because Krishan Hogan is so good, but he's going to be right there in the votes. And uh, he's he's a phenomenal player. We've had to watch him now. Uh, obviously, we played against him last year and again this year, but. Um, you know, that's that's kind of the game plan is just figure out how, how can we defend him as much as possible? How can we create incompletions, confuse him a little bit to maybe he makes uh, poor throws at times. But ultimately, the great ones find a way to, to get things done, and, and we just got to battle against him. This is a team uh, in Missouri Baptist that has really relied on its four-man rush. And I think... You've had some interesting thoughts on that. You and I have talked about it a little bit. Uh, when you when to use the four man rush, when to bring extra pressure. I know you talked a little bit about bringing extra pressure this week. Uh, how do you make that determination? Since the four man rush has really been quite effective, as it, like I would say in just thinking about in previous years, how do you make that determination? Uh, as, a, as a defensive staff, one thing we try to sit down and look at is if we bring uh, a pressure, you know, first and foremost, what we do is we sit there and practice, and when we dial up a blitz in practice, we determine, we, we're always 
marking back on film and, and live in, during the practices, you know, was, did our rush get to the quarterback? Were we effective in it? Um, and then as we get into the games, we are doing the same thing. If we're bringing um, a, whatever pressure it is,